So what we're going to do now is we are going to look at, I, I talked about the idea that we came up with graphs and we came up with equations. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to look at how we can use those to uh, predict future events and figure out when future events are going to happen. So, all right, so we're going to continue on with trig application graphing. We're just basically trig applications. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put together another scenario and we're going to give it a whirl. So um, <clears throat> how about uh, a swing going back and forth? All right, so here's a swing um, attached to whatever, doesn't really matter. Um, and this swing is going to swing back and forth like this. Um, now, the furthest horizontally it will get from, there's its resting position, right? So there it is at rest. Uh, the furthest horizontally it can get is two meters either direction, right? So two meters on either side. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to say it's like a pendulum and it's just going back and forth and back and forth. Um, and what we want to do is we want to track the distance from the center, um, and we'll do it like a number line that this side is going to be negative, and this side is going to be positive distance from the center, and we'll call the center line zero. So it's kind of like the, uh, that's the, the axis, so that's the zero. So uh, to do one full swing, so there and back, so one full swing takes... It'll be a, a rather slow pendulum, takes 10 seconds, let's say, just to make the numbers nice. So what we're gonna do is we are always going to take these and we're going to first off, so the first question is gonna be to graph this scenario, okay? So here we go, we're gonna graph it. Um, so here we go, and again, we said this side was positive and this side was negative, and it's gonna start from the resting position. So how, takes one full swing, takes 10 seconds, and we are going to start from the zero position and head toward the positive to start, okay? Now, the furthest away that we can get is going to be two meters to the positive, and over here we're gonna get two meters to the negative. And so this is the horizontal distance. And it's gonna be in meters. Now, we said it's gonna take 10 full seconds for a complete cycle, so we'll do, there's gonna be 10 right there, and this will be 20 over here for a second one. And I'm going to label this as time in seconds. Now I'm going to put in my framers just to make the drawing of this a little bit easier. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to start from the zero position. So that means we're going to start right here and head towards the positive to start. And it takes 10 full seconds. So um, I'm gonna put in the midpoint right there. And so it's gonna go all the way out till we get to as far away as we can get. And then of course we start swinging backwards and we go back to the center line. And then we go as far to the left as we can get and then we go backwards, right? And so here we go. So what we have is our graph of our distance from the center line versus time. So there it is, there's our graph. Easy peasy, that's what we did yesterday. By all means, take a moment and uh, pause the video and go ahead and see if you can get the exact equation that's going on for this one, um, because it would be a good thing to do. All right, so go ahead, stop the video and come on back. Welcome back. I am going to start by saying, I'm going to write the general form. You don't have to write the general form. I'm just going to do it for completeness. A of sine or cos of Bx plus C plus D. And we're going to kind of go through the order that we always go through and figure out the pieces. Well, D is the center line. As it turns out right here, the center line is at 
zero. So, I mean, I, I can put in plus zero. I'm, I'm, I'll get rid of it after I've written it the first time. Um, but, you know, there it is. Uh, the A value is the amplitude. So if we think about the amplitude, how far from the center we can get, well, it's pretty obvious that we can get two away. So two is going to go in here. Now, deciding if it's sine or cos. Recall, of course, that sine starts at its midpoint. Cosine starts at its max or its min. So this is definitely going to be sine. Now, deciding whether this A value is positive or negative. Well, it goes upwards to begin with. We know that if sine goes upwards to begin with, it's going to be positive. So I'll just put that there again for completeness. Stuff in the middle is always the most challenging. Now, I have that equation. The equation says that period length is equal to 360 divided by B. Now, I know what the period length is. The period length right here is 10. That means the period length is 10. So 10 is going to go in. We're going to get 360 over B. I'm going to multiply both sides by B or cross multiply either way. So we're going to get that 10B is equal to 360. I'm going to divide by 10. I'm going to divide by 10. And we're going to get that B is equal to 36. So we come back here and we're like, all right, that's 36. B, or excuse me, 36X. So 36X. Now, the C value talks about phase shift. I said before, and I'll repeat it again, for practical problems, I'm never going to include one that has a phase shift for you guys. But, you know, we look here and we can see that it starts at zero. So you could solve and you can be like, all right, well, then it's going to be plus zero. So I'm going to rewrite it just in its cleaner form. So we're going to have Y equals 2 sine of 36X. And I don't need to say that plus zero in either case. And that's the exact equation. There we go. So we've got our equation. Now, that's review. We're going to look at how we can make use of these. So imagine that I asked another question. So question three. Um, where will the swing be after, let's say, I don't know, after... 71 seconds, right? So we know that it goes, you know, back and forth. And at, at, after 10 seconds, it's right back where it started. And after 20 seconds, it's right back where it started. And after 30 seconds, it's right back where it started. So after 71 seconds, you can imagine 70 seconds, it was right back where it started. So it's going to be a little bit above that. So I can predict that my answer is going to be somewhere between zero and two. But I, I don't have to predict. This is where this equation actually comes in. The way we have it written right now is x represents, because if we go and we look at our axis, the x-axis is time in seconds. Well, I've got a time in seconds right here. It's, it's 71. So I can come back here and I can say, well, this is going to be y equals 2 sine of 36. And my x value is 71. So I can actually substitute that 71 in for the x. And then what I can do is I can actually just type that directly into my calculator. So I'm going to grab my calculator here. Um, here it is here. Okay, so I got my calculator. We're going to make sure our calculator is in degrees. That's super important because it'll give us the wrong answer if it's not in degrees. So I'm going to come back here and then I'm just going to type this exactly as it appears. So we're going to have 2 sine of 36 bracket 71. And close those brackets and we're going to say all right that's 1.18 so 1.18 and so 1.18 meters because it's positive it tells us you know kind of if we're thinking over here here's two meters so the one meter marker would be in about here so 1.18 meters the swing would be right about there and so this model has predicted exactly where that pendulum, that swing, is going to be after 71 seconds. So one way we can use these models is to say, oh, we can figure out where they're going to be after a given time. The second way that we can use these models, okay, so the second way is I could say, when are the first, let's say, three times... The swing will be at the negative 1.5 meter position. 
So let's go back and kind of look at both the diagram and the graph to figure out what I'm asking. So we said this side is negative, so I maybe put a negative over here. Um, and then this is zero, so negative 1.5, that's what I said, right? Uh, yeah, negative 1.5. That's going to be when the swing is out at this position right here. So and I said the first three times. Well, you can imagine the swing starts going like this, goes out to its max, comes back here. It hits it, goes past it, comes back, hits it. So there's the first two times. So then we go all the way over here and then come back and it would hit it. There's the third time. So in context of the graph, if this is one, then 1.5 negative is, is right about here. And so I'm looking for the first three times that this has actually reached that spot. So that's going to be this position. That's the first one. That's going to be this position. That's the second one. And that's going to be this position. That's the third one. Now, three different answers for one question. And this is where real depth of understanding comes in. So this is all about position. So if we think, you know, we've still got the y equals 2 sine of 36x, okay? And we said that x was time, y is position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this negative 1.5 and I'm going to substitute it in for y. So we're going to have negative 1.5 is equal to 2 sine 36x. And now what we need to do is we need to solve for the x value because the x value represents time. And we want to know when. So when is asking us for time. Okay, so we need to find a time. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and solve for x. So we're going to work through bed mass backwards. The 2 is multiplying this, right? So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get rid of the 2. So divide by 2, get rid of the 2. And we're going to get that this side is now sine of 36x. Now, if you need your calculator, go ahead. You can grab your calculator and you can say, all right, well, that means that this is going to be uh, negative 1.5 divided by 2. And that should be negative 3 quarters. Yep, there it is, negative 0 0.75. So we've got on this side negative 0 0.75. And we're a little bit closer to what we need. Now, sine is happening to this thing. I have to undo sine. So the opposite operation of sine or the inverse operation of sine is, well, sine inverse. So I'm going to sine inverse both sides, but I know that really it's just going to end up being on this. So negative zero point sine, negative, sine inverse of negative 0 0.75 is equal to, and this sine is now going to be gone, 36x. So I'm going to grab my calculator again. And we're going to do second function sine inverse, again, making sure we're in degrees of negative 0 0.75. Okay, we do that. It's going to be not a very nice number, but there it is, negative 48.59. So this is going to be negative 48.59 is equal to 36x. Most of the way there. And then what we're going to do, obviously, is we're going to divide both sides by 36. So divide by 36. And divide by 36. And you might have a premonition that we're going to get a rather strange answer here, but that's okay. We're going to talk about that. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to divide by 36. Divide by 36 and we're going to get negative 1.35. So x is equal to negative 1.35 seconds. Now that's the answer. Well, first off, let's think about a couple of different things going on here. I wanted three answer was were the first three times and I've only got one time. And, you know, so I wanted three times, but I only got one. And not only that, I got a negative time. What the heck does negative time mean? So let's go back and talk about this. And this is why this graph is ever so important. We know the idea that sine, even though I've sketched the first two cycles here, sine actually goes forever. It doesn't just start here or stop here. It goes backwards and it keeps going forwards. So I'm going to add in a really quick, you know, light sketch of it going backwards like this, right? So it keeps going backwards. I'm not going to bother. Oh, I mean, why not? Okay. And it goes like this. Keeps going. What we found is we found negative 1.35 seconds. So I go back up here. This is the five second mark, 10 seconds. In theory, this is 15 seconds. This is zero. This spot right here would be negative 
five seconds. So negative one and a bit is in this region right here. We wanted to know this spot, this spot, this spot. What we actually found was this spot. And here's the reason for that. When you ask your calculator to find an answer, it always tries to find the answer closest to the origin. There's the origin. This answer is closer than this answer. So the calculator says, oh, here it is right here. It doesn't know that you don't want something negative because that's a valid answer too, but not for our question. So here's what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to use our smarts to figure out what this and this and this are going to be. So here, let's talk about that. What we have is we said that this is, and I've already forgotten, negative one point, what was it, one three? Nope, negative 1.35. So this is negative 1.35 seconds. That's this answer right here, okay? I want this one, and I want this one, and I want this one. So if we look at this, we know that sinusoidal functions repeat the same thing over and over and over and over again. And if we look at this, this is on, this answer is just after an absolute value. So if I go to the next answer that's just abst after an absolute value, we get this answer right here. So this one is on the same position on the curve as this one is. Okay, these two are in the same part of the curve. It's on the upswing after the valley. It's on the upswing after the valley. And in theory, there's another one that's in the similar position over here, and it's on the same upswing after the valley. So if we know those are the exact same position on the curve, we know that they are one period length apart. So the distance between this one and this one is exactly one period length. Right? That's exactly one period length. Well, how big is one period length? Well, we know that one period length is 10 seconds. So I know that that distance is 10 seconds. So I can say, well, 10 seconds after this one occurred, we got this one. And if I wanted this one, we could say it was 20 seconds after because there's 10 and there would be another 10. So I can get this answer by adding 10 seconds to this answer. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab my calculator and I'm going to say, I'm going to add 10 seconds to that. And I'm going to find that 8.65 is one of the answers. So this answer right here is at the 8. 0.65 second mark. I'm like, okay. And this one over here, if we wanted to, I didn't ask for it, but if we did, that would be at the 18.65 second mark. And if I wanted to keep going and find this one, that'd be at the 28.65 second mark. Okay. So good. We got that one. That's not bad. And then you think, all right, well, I got this one, but I need this one. And you're right. We do need that one. Now, the distance from here to here we said is 1.35. That's how far apart those are, 1.35. Now, the thing about, I didn't do a fantastic, although this graph isn't that bad, trig functions are perfectly symmetric. So the distance from here to here, this distance right there, is actually the same as this distance right here, right? And so what we can do is we can say, all right, well, this distance was 1.35. So the distance after five is also 1.35. So that means I can find the second one, or this, actually, I guess it's the first occurrence, but the second answer we're going to find. I can add the 1.35, because that's this distance, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to 5. So I'm going to add that. So 5 plus 1.35, well, that is going to be 6.35 seconds. I'm like, all right, we've got our first two answers. Now, we could we could approach this answer similarly. We could say, oh, it's it's 1.35 after 15, and we'd say, okay, that one's going to be 16.35. Absolutely right. Or we could say, well, that answer is on the down slope right after the midpoint. This is after the down slope on the midpoint. So the distance between this one and this one is one period length. So we could add 10 seconds, which would also give us 16.35. So there's the other answer, 16.35. Okay. So that's a much more involved process, and this was a particularly complex answer. We don't always find one that is negative. If I had have asked for when it was 
at the one second or the one meter away mark, it would have been this spot here. But the calculator will always try and find the answer that's closest to the origin. That's why it's always really important to sketch out um, exactly the graph as accurately and normally make it quite large, like you're thinking at least probably a fifth to a quarter of the page so that we can add those details. So I'll go back down. 6.35 is one of the answers. So at the time is going to be equal to 6.35. I know that 16.35, uh, let's, no, there we go, 16.35 was another answer. And then the middle answer, what was it again? It was 8.65 seconds. Okay. So we found the first three times that the swing was at the negative 1.5 meter position. So that's how we can actually use trig functions to do some modeling and predicting. So we're going to try another one of those as practice. Um, and then I'll write one up for a homework question for you to try as well. Now, these are, um, you know, fairly involved questions. But this is kind of the, the pinnacle of trig that we're going to do um, in grade 11 M. Okay. So uh, here goes another one. We'll do it uh, a more, you know, a, a more common example. So imagine that we had um, an exercise ball at home and someone kind of gave it a push across the floor. So here we go here. So here's our floor. And it's going to be uh, rolling this way. And the height of this is a bigger than an average exercise ball. It is 140 centimeters tall, this particular exercise ball. Um, it takes exactly, so it takes I don't know, make it three seconds to do one full roll of the ball. Okay, so that's one complete revolution. Now, there is a valve on the ball. So there is the valve on the, vault, the ball. So what I want to do is I want to track the height of the valve above the ground versus time for two full revolutions. Okay, so we're going to track the height of the valve versus time for two full revolutions. And here's what we're going to do. These are the four questions I want you to answer. So question number one is um, graph the scenario. Okay, that's going to always be the first question. And then number two, the same question is always pretty much going to be, uh, I would like you to determine an equation. And then question number three is going to be, what I'd like you to do is I would like you to determine how high the valve stem is. So uh, how high is the valve uh, after, I don't know, how about uh, 11 seconds of rolling? And question number four is going to be um, when are the first three times the valve is, let's say, 50 centimeters above ground? So, you know, you could pause this and give it a whirl as much as you can. But I'm going to start right away. Now, um, I have drawn the valve at the 12 o'clock position because that's where it's going to be starting. And maybe I'll even say, um, so valve begins at the 12 o'clock position. 
Okay, so here we go. So we're going to graph this thing. So grab some axes. Uh, okay. Now, um, how is the highest the valve can get above the ground? Well, the highest the valve can get above the ground, oh, line mode. Uh, so the highest it can get above the ground, well, it's going to be 140 centimeters because that's the diameter of the ball. What's the closest it can get to the ground? Well, it can actually touch the ground. So we want a midpoint. So half of 140 is 70 centimeters. Okay. So I'm going to label this because we should always label our axes. Height in centimeters. Um, and then we know that it takes three seconds to do one full roll. So I'm going to come down here and say, there's three seconds. So a second full roll would be completed at the six second mark. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in my, you know, framers just to kind of help me draw this a little bit. Here we go. There. And then there. And then there. Close as we can get. Fair enough. Uh, back we go. So uh, the valve, it starts at, the at its very highest position. So it's going to start at the very highest, it's going to roll, go downwards, it's going to get to the ground, and then it's going to roll and be back up high again, right? So we're going to touch this spot, we're going to touch this spot, we're going to touch this spot, and we're going to touch this spot. So we're going to do our best to draw this in as smoothly as we can. So here we go. There we go. Okay, so there's our sketch. And I'm going to say that this is time in seconds again, because it's important that we always label our axes. So we've got our graph. Now we're going to need to have our equation. So that was question one there. Question number two here. Get a little bit thicker marker again. Um, now, uh, so we're going to say, all right, well, it's going to be y equals I'm going to start with the center line. So there's a center line at 70. So I'm going to say, I know there's a plus 70 hanging off the back here. What is the amplitude? Well, the amplitude is how far from the center line we can get. Well, that's also 70, which is handy. It's 70. Now, is it sine or cos? Well, sine has to start from its midpoint. This doesn't. It starts from its max. So it's got to be cos. Now, is it positive or negative? Well, it starts at its max. Cos starts at its max. So it's really a positive. Now, I know the period length is 3. Got that equation. It says period length is equal to 360 over B. And in this case, the period length is 3. So we're going to have 360 over B is equal to 3. Going to multiply both sides by B. Going to multiply by B. We're going to get that 3B equals 360. Going to divide by 3, divide by 3, and we're going to get then that B is equal to 120. So we can come back here and say, all right, going to be 120 x and there is no c value because as i've said with practical problems i'm not going to have c values involved so i'm just going to place plus zero so i'm going to rewrite this a little bit cleaner so we're going to have then the equation is y equals 70 cosine of 120 x plus 70 and there it is there's our equation so at number three uh, let's get this color uh number three is going to be how high is the valve after 11 seconds of rolling? This is the easiest variant by far. 11 seconds is obviously a time, and we know the x-axis is time, so we're going to be ending up putting in 11 right there. So we're going to have y equals 70 cosine of 120 times 11 plus 70. Okay, I'm going to grab my calculator. I'm going to type that in, and we're going to see exactly how high the valve is after 11 seconds. So we're going to do 70, come back here, 70 cosine of 120 times 11. And I'm going to close that off, plus 70. We do that and we find, oh, it's exactly the 35 centimeter high mark. So it's exactly 35, 35 centimeters high. Okay, so after 11 seconds, that's exactly how high the valve is. That was a nice round number. Didn't expect that. Um, and then the last question. The last question is probably the most challenging. Well, not probably. It is the most challenging. Uh, number four is going to be, 
when are the first three times the valve is 50 centimeters above the ground. So I can go back up to my diagram. There's 70. 50 is in about here. So that means I want this spot. I want this spot. And I want this spot. Right? So I know that this is 1.5. I know that this is 4.5 just for, you know, maybe using calculations later, but I want to know when is it 50 centimeters above the ground. 50 centimeters is obviously a height. And Y is the height. So I'm going to take that 50 and I'm going to put it in for Y. So 50 is equal to 70 cosine of 120X plus 70. And then what I need to do is I need to solve for X. That mass backwards says kick that 70 over, become negative. So we're going to have 50 minus 70. I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to kind of do the calculations a little bit more expediently. So 50 minus 70 is negative 20. That equals 70 cosine of 120x. Going to divide both sides by 20, by 70. Excuse me, divide by 70. Divide by 70. And we're going to get, I'm going to reduce that fraction. It's negative 2 sevenths is equal to the cosine of 120 x. I'm going to cos inverse both sides. So we're going to get then that the cos inverse of negative 2 sevenths is equal to 120x. So I'm going to grab my calculator. I'm going to do the cos inverse of negative 2 sevenths. So we're going to do second function cos inverse of negative 2 over 7. Okay. I'm going to do that. And we're going to get, it's not going to be a very nice number. I know it's not yet. So it's going to be 106.60. So I'm going to move this back up here. So we're going to have that 106.60 is equal to 120x. I'm going to divide both sides by 120. Divide by 120. And we're going to get that x is equal to, so divided by 120, it's going to be like, I don't know, 0.78 or something like that, 0.89. I'm not even close. So 0 0.89. So we're going to come back here. Where is my pen? Come here. Where is my pen? There it is. There it goes. Uh, and I've lost it. This was 0 0.89. 0 0.89. Lovely. So go back up to my diagram because my diagram is really, really useful. So this is 0 0.89 seconds. There's the first one. This one is actually not as easy to get as this one because I know that the distance between these two is one full period length. And one full period length is three seconds. So if it happened at 0 0.89, three seconds later, this one is 3.89. So that one's easy. This one's a little tougher. A couple of different ways we can do it. But the easiest way is to say this distance is the same as this distance. Okay? And so the distance is going to be 3 minus 0 0.89, which makes this one 2.11 seconds. And there are our first three instances where the valve is 50 centimeters above the ground. Okay, so this is a tougher one. Uh, I'm going to stop the video now, and I'm going to post, in addition to this video, a couple of questions that uh, you can do to practice. Okay, thank you.